What is going down, everyone? Today, a brand new optional opens up for AMD's Adrenaline software. My name's Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel, and today we're going to be journeying into what the software is going to offer compared to the new recommended 21.6.1 versus the brand new optional 21.6.2. One of the things I would definitely recommend is to check out the video that I did the comparison of some old software versus the new software to prove it really doesn't matter or does it matter for the FSR. Total different segment. This one's going to be benchmarks, patch notes of the brand new optional. So let's go ahead and slide into it. If you're newer to the network, hit the subscription button and accompanying that with the notification bell to get all the brand new tech news that slides out from the channel. So let's go ahead and roll into it, shall we? One of the things that it's going to be addressing as we can scroll into is Droom Eternal. You can see the Vulcan and ray tracing support for that. On top of the Vulcan support is some pretty cool stuff for the custom border colors, the shader subgroup and the uniform control flow, and the color right enable. Some of these are going to allow specific color borders in order for the sample of the VK portions of what is being used, as well as the uniform modules that will come down to the stronger guarantees inside of the subgroups. You can also see that the disable the right on the out put of the color attachment via the pipeline in the dynamic state. This has potentially reduced the pipeline count and increased the efficiency. So that's going to be fun to see on benchmarks. What we can see here though, what they've fixed is Mech Warrior 5 inside the mercenaries on DirectX 11 for as far as the visual effects that may be observed on some Radeon graphics cards such as the 6000 series. There's also the error message of the 184 may be received after running the AMD auto detect and installing the utility program also on top of that, for as far as the substance, the 3D printer, we may freeze when the application is on some Radeon's cards, such as the 6900. Now, known issues are pretty much adding to the newer lines, as we can see that there are some experience elevated levels of memory in the usage of the AMD and the experience of the programming. A temporary workaround is the output of the AMD experience program. Now you can opt out of these situations for as far as having their version of the software, but I, I kind of like it for as far as the way you can run into and control it. It seems pretty simple for as far as like the tinkering, you just got to reset it every so often. But in this case, at the very end, when you are installing the software, you do want to opt out of this one, just for the simple reason, it doesn't have any bloatware. Yes, they're not collecting any of your information, but the issue is that, you know, you're going to have certain specific hardware. It can detect that and all that other fun stuff, but it's running a program to do so. So I wouldn't really recommend it. Now, one thing you can see is Resident Evil Village may experience some intermittent portions of hang up for the TDR on the Radeon 7 card which has been a prevalent issue for as far as the first mission inside of the game. The enhanced sync may cause a black screen when occurred and he enabled the games for the system configuration. Any users who may experience issues with the enhanced sync should disable it for a quick fix. For as far as connecting to displays with the larger resolution inside the refresh rate may flicker for as far as the RX Vega series inside of graphics cards. The Oculus service inside of the errors may receive the Radeon RX 5000 as well as 6000 series inside of the product that prevents the Oculus link setup and the software from running. The Radeon performance inside of the metrics, inside of the logging features, may experience some intermediate, higher than expected uh, memory clock values. The rise in mastery is not detected inside of the adrenaline software. Sometimes might be required to uninstall that sometimes if you're utilizing the CPU overclocking function of that. The blue and black screen observed inside of mobile systems and temporary disable of the enhanced sign-in and the driver mismatch error 
which two versions of the adrenaline software inside of the window storage and the wind versus the amd support version um which isn't really funny because that probably caused a lot of issues uh are now on your systems are temporary to work around is launch the windows and that should clean it up but you can also do a ddu which i'll have a link down below which takes out everything and then just install one and i would also recommend disconnecting your ethernet cable sometimes that will also work for as far as the connection from windows getting there if you're just trying to do just the regular amd software now for as far as the last adrenaline workaround for disabling the core isolation in the blue and black screen and you can see that also amd is investigating the d3 code for as far as what's been seen on the motherboards after updating the latest writing on software and the lower than expected performance on the amd athlon mobile pro platforms now looking at for as far as the links inside of the known issues the gray frame and the corruption inside of there for the hvic versus just the a VC encoder instead, which is your workaround at this point in time. But let's see how it sizes up. How does the brand new 21.62 seem to fare against the 21.6.1? These are two different attributes inside of there. And right out the gate, for as far as DirectX 12, 4K actually pulls ahead. And if you watched the FSR special before with the 20.6.2 versus the 21.6.2, even though I did mention the 21.6.2 as the 20.6.2, because it, it, the UI has changed over the years, but I think the biggest one was from the 2019 to 2020, and I feel like they've been adding cool stuff to the 2020, but they don't want to get rid of it yet. I kind of want a really cool fresh UI. I mean, sometimes when you install it, it will still say the 2020 software installer, which is kind of funny. So I say that as like a pun in the footnote, but we can see in the DirectX 12 department 4K, we are getting nominal increasements as you look at the scores of 11 on the graphics increasing. This trend continues in 1080p for as far as the new driver on the right and the old driver on the left. We can see that not a percentile breaking thing, but when looking at the graphics scores, it is pushing a little further in the DirectX 12 department. Now you can definitely see where, well, there's not a lot of huge increasements happening here. Almost a dead tie if you look at it in the uh, graphics department at least, hardy har har. But let's see what 1080p happens in DirectX 11 and how it pans out. And this is where you see the push forward, where the old driver gets a little edge over the newer driver. But again, these are like 76 percentiles matched up. And let's see what just the bare bones DirectX 11. That's gonna show us a huge increasement or maybe a standalone of just this face off between each other. And this is where you see the new driver falter a little bit against the brand new driver in certain departments so i mean it's fighting itself really if you look at it because it's like it should be more efficient when you look at score to score but because of the efficiency of the old driver working in tandem with itself and the cpu and all the other physical points it definitely shoots up a little bit but if you look at the graphics score on the newer one it it beats it it's just one of those weird things where mathematically it kind of makes sense, but kind of doesn't. But graphically, it pushes forward in the best departments because it's you getting a little bit more performance here, not the overall score. So with that being said, does it make sense to install this? Yes. Seems like they are ironing out a lot of the issues that gameplay happens to be inside of your day-to-day -day usage. Does it make your computer run a little funky with physics inside of your CPU, maybe not combining the best scores together. They're working on it. If you notice some issues, DDU it. Use one of the links up above in order to actually physically gain back the performance you had with rolling back an actual update. Definitely a 
non-desirable point of time with trying to reinvest your reinstallations, but it is an option in order to gain back what you happen to have inside of your plate today. I'll see you guys and gals in the near future. If you're newer to the network, you can always like, share, and subscribe. Absolutely free. Helps me out as a creator. And if you do today, who knows? Maybe this whole GPU shortage will end. And, you know, then, you know, Lisa Sue will finally send me a freaking GPU. Because they'll be like, hey, you know, you've been always asking for one. Now we got tons of them. So here you go. And I'll be like, cool. Could have used it like a few months ago, but I will totally take that now. I'm not complaining. Seriously, send me a GPU, Lisa Sue, and sign it be awesome I'll, I'll like literally use it it won't it won't just be like on display it'll be display in technology and utilize it'd be great come on amity what do you got to lose i mean i'll just hot rod it and put liquid metal on it and make it super efficient gotta subscribe to find out anyways everyone see you guys and gals in the near future stay safe stay classy and it seems like this is a decent update so i think moving forward for as far as june amd is doing a great thing they were probably more focused on the FSR release, which was the last one, and then iron out some potential fixes within the Vulcan category of pipeline inefficiency.